Hey there Mudroomers, it is Carmen here with Mako and today I'm going to do a tutorial for this project here. Um, we just recently posted about this project and got a lot of questions about the plopping technique that was referenced in the written project instructions. So. We just wanted to come on in and showcase how to do that. Um, this project is using our pottery cascades. So these are kind of what we group together with our like kind of consider our low fire fluxes. Um, so these are utilized to promote integration and sometimes mobility with low fire glazes. I'll be honest, they definitely promote more interaction than they do uh, mobility. So depending on what glaze you're layering it with, sometimes it can produce a bit of mobility. And if you put particularly the clear cascade on really heavy, again, it can still produce some mobility, but it's not going to necessarily be in line with the fluxes when you're using it at low fire. When you bring it up to higher temperatures, it can perform similar and especially in the regard that um, they'll be really sensitive to the glaze that you put on top of them. So if I'm using a really, really stable glaze, that's a cone six or stable stoneware glaze, and I layer these, they're not gonna produce as much mobility as they would if I'm layering it with a more mobile glaze. Um, so that's just a little bit about our pottery cascades and using them at cone six. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start plopping these on so that we can get some drying time in and then uh, we can talk about uh, the glazes that we'll be using. So here we are going to start using our white cascade. We want to use a soft fan brush for plopping as this will plump and apply the product thicker than if we were to use a stiffer brush or if we were to apply the product using regular brush strokes. I am applying these plops, leaving space to add alternating clear cascade plops in between. You don't really need to be super tidy, even if the product drips, that's fine, since we are expecting the glaze to melt down anyways. Here, the white cascade will promote more interaction with the glaze that's on top of it and it'll add a bit less mobility than the clear cascades will. Next, we have our clear cascade. This will produce a bit more mobility than the white cascade and this will create the cool pattern that you see in the sample where the design all melts down into the middle. So here we have our plopped pattern using the white and clear cascade. We'll be applying one more coat to ensure that there is enough product on here. So here we have our sample using the green tea over top of our cascades. We get this beautiful blue variation in the middle. Um, where this melts down. Today, for this particular sample, we are going to be using oyster on the bowl. 
So I'm expecting the oyster to perform very similar to the green tea because it is actually in the same performance grouping as green tea. So these glazes will break over texture and often add mobility to um, combinations when they're layered. You can find the performance groupings on our website in our comprehensive stoneware guide. This is really helpful for finding glazes that perform similar to one another. Other categories of performance groupings that would work well with this technique would be the breaking mats, dynamic mats, dynamic gloss, breaking gloss, modeled, and the opals. All right, so here we're gonna go ahead and add our second coat of the Cascade. The fun thing about this technique being a, in a bowl is that it is safe to experiment with mobility. So if I wasn't really sure how the glaze on top would perform or how much mobility it would add, uh, a bowl is a really great piece to experiment with this in because you're not going to be sacrificing your kiln shells. So next we're gonna go ahead and paint the back of this bowl here. On our sample bowl, we showcased our Blue Isle Stroke and Coat. And on this sample here, we're gonna go ahead and put Wine About It. So I'm choosing Wine About It because it will match the uh, mobility color from the uh, oyster. When you're firing Wine About It to Cone 6, which is listed on the label as well as on our website. It's gonna get a little bit lighter in color and that will go really, really well with the kind of lavender that's showcased when oyster is used in combination. So when you're applying stroke and coat, typically we recommend anywhere from two to three coats. Uh, when you're firing it to cone six, I typically recommend to brush the coats out really, really well because a lot of the time if our stroke and coat is applied really thick at cone six, it can create a bit of an orange peel texture and that is not something that we want. So this is really common with reds and oranges in particular, but it can happen uh, with any glaze that's being applied really thick. So what I like to do with stroke and coats when I'm firing them to cone six is put a nice coat on, but I really, really brush it out well to ensure that my application is even and my application is not too thick. And that really helps have consistent color as well as prevent that orange peel texture that can happen with thick application or variation in the application. So we've got our first coat on there. Just gonna set this down here to dry for a second. Using the stoneware bisque, the first coat dries almost instantaneously. So for this here, I'm just gonna be applying a total of two coats. So we can go ahead and apply our second coat to the back here. Looks like it's pretty much dry. Just making sure to pull this glaze nice and even. And since this color, I know that it's going to fade, uh, the even application is even more imperative because 
the variation in the glaze thickness will showcase really, really well um, in a glaze that's kind of faded. So it'll show a lot of variation, which is another reason why we want to make sure this is pulled out as well as we can. All right, so I've got my two coats on here and then we'll just clean up the foot there. And stroke and coat is stable at cone six uh, relatively. So if I'm applying it on the back like this, it's not necessarily gonna melt down. Uh, so I can keep that glaze pretty tight up on the foot. But if I was using this in design work, that's when a lot of the time stroke and coat can have a bit of mobility in particular when you're layering it. So if I'm using it on its own, just layered on itself, two, three coats, I'm not gonna expect mobility. But if I'm doing design work, sometimes I can see a bit of a blur uh, when they get layered. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of this stroking coat onto the clear cascade plops. So I would anticipate that the clear cascade would pull the stroke and coat down uh, into the mobility, uh, but it totally could not do anything. But we are going to see. All right, so our glaze has dried around the rim here, and we can go ahead and apply our stoneware glaze on top of the cascades and stroke and coat on the rim. Again, today we are going to be applying oyster instead of the uh, green tea that was used on this original sample here. I'll showcase these results uh, once they're out of the kiln. So we're going to use a soft fan brush to apply our glaze. I recommend using any soft natural fiber fan brush for stonework glazes. It really helps put that glaze on nice and thick. This is a number four. Fan. Um, we do manufacture a number eight size fan too. If you're glazing a larger surface area or if you tend to be light handed uh, with the brush. So I'll just really load that brush up. I like it to be kind of almost dripping still when I put it on the surface. I'll cover those details and then just kind of clean up our rim and inside here. So that is here we're doing coat number one and we're gonna go ahead and apply three coats of this oyster on top of our other glazes. So we'll go ahead and let that dry and return for our next coat. All right, so our first coat is nice and dry. The top here is a bit damp, but it's not shiny anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and apply my second coat of oyster onto the surface here. The second coat will go on a little bit smoother than the first since the bisque has been hydrated a bit. So I'll go ahead and let this dry and then we'll apply our final coat. All right, our second coat is getting nice and dry and we'll go ahead and apply our third coat here. Just so everybody knows, I'm applying this to our stoneware bisque, which is a slip cast white stoneware body. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this to cone six um, on medium speed. All righty. There we go, I'll pop this in the kiln tonight and come back and we'll check out the results tomorrow. And here we have our fired results using both the clear and white cascades, a little bit of stroke and coat with a oyster. So you can see here how the results compare. The star shape is much more uh, clear with the green tea for some reason, but you do get some really nice 
interaction here with the oyster and the cascade. So you can see here, this is where we have the white cascade. You get that little white interaction and then where that really flows down is the clear cascade. It doesn't seem that the stroking coat really influenced the outcome very much. If you check the back here, here we have a wine about it. And so as you can see here, if you're familiar with wine about it, this is much, much lighter than wine about it usually would be. Um, so it's not really surprising that the stroking coat didn't really influence the results a lot, especially considering it really matches this color that's flowing on the inside here. So this purple variation is really common with oyster and can be seen a lot when you're using oyster in combinations. So if you haven't, feel free to check out our glaze combo gallery on our website. We do have oyster as one of the featured combos for that section of the website. So we've got plenty of combinations uh, using oyster there. So thank you so much for tuning in today, guys. I think that's all I have for you. I just really, really wanted to showcase this project on two, with two different glazes here, just to show um, how versatile these techniques can be and really encourage you guys to uh, experiment using uh, different glazes. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comments. We love hearing from you guys, as well as learning what you're interested in. And as always, make it Mako.